Okay, well, we should probably start talking now. So uh, we're here at the mini roundhouse. We're making good progress. Uh, it's very similar to the roundhouse that I've built before. Uh, I'll, put, I'll link to that on the channel. That was a bigger one. But with this one, we've got higher, higher walls in relation to the rafters themselves. And that means it just gives you a bit more headroom inside. If we went for lower lower walls and the rafters would be lower and it'd be you know a little bit a little bit narrower on the head so what we've done is we've got some thatch this is water reed and i've explained this in videos before it's got a hollow stem to it and it's been used as a thatching material for hundreds of well thousands of years really with these hollow holes and it just sheds off rain really easily and you just lay it down and you lay it with the seed head up a lot of people struggle to understand that with thatching but you lay it certainly here in the UK traditional thatching you lay it with the seed head up like that and it just gives you it it makes it kick out at the bottom and the water is it's the way it grows it's the way the plant grows out of the ground it just helps that water to travel down the chute and then shoot off at the end so we're going to leave a bit of an overhang on the eaves here last time when we, I did the roundhouse we thatched it last so we did the wattle and daub the clay walls first and then thatched it last and what happened was it was the walls were open to the elements and it meant that whenever it rained and it dried and it rained and it dried and it was sunny it just cracked and it ended up cracking the clay loads so we're going to do it slightly differently here we're going to put the thatch on first and then do the clay and the wattle and daub that way when we've got the clay on there it's, it's out of the elements it's totally waterproof because of the thatch above it that's the theory anyway and hopefully it should work so we're going to lay this thatch on in different layers now, spread it out, tie it down with some ligers. We're not going to do it with spars, which is the twisted hazel spikes that I've used before. We are going to do it with just cordage, some bank line, and just tie it down. So this is the hazel. We're going to use this as ligers, which is a piece of essentially a stick to pin the thatch down to the rafters and the battens themselves. So yeah, thanks for tuning in and um, let's crack on. You'll have water reed growing over in your pond. Right under there, yeah, under, and then it's going to be really thick, so let's cut it early. So we'll snap this stick. Yeah. Don't put it under anymore there, we'll snap it. You've got the rod to cut it, yeah. Okay. Get ready. It's going to absolutely do the thing. It's got to overhang on the wall. You've got to roll it. Yeah, you're aware of it first. Roll some under there. So we've made progress on the roof. We've done the first layer of thatch. Hopefully you can see that. I'll show you a bit closer in a minute. But here is our, our dilemma. We have run out of water reed, which is what the first layer is. Um, we, we, ideally we'd need obviously another layer to cover that, that stick ligger there. We need another layer there and then a straw cap on the top. But what we do have and what dad kept from the Saxon house ages ago, a couple of years ago when I did the ridge of the Saxon house is long straw. And I'll show you that, that's down here. So we'll just show you the difference. And we've got enough, hopefully, to do another thin layer around the top and potentially do the cap. But it's gonna be tight. This is water reed. You can see that the seed head, it's really fine. And actually the seeds are kind of coming off now already. If I shake it, you can see them coming off. So that's the water reed and this is long straw. And it's quite easy, obviously, to identify because of these seed heads here. Ideally, we need to get these seed heads off because what, what will happen is the seeds will start to fall out. This will peel peel to the side. The seeds will start to fall out and we'll get new straw growing on the roof. Well, that might look pretty and cool, but actually it's the seeds that drop on the floor that then attract all the mice and the rats, which is not ideal. So, we, you know, at some point we might need to get rid of these seed heads. But that's the difference. Also with the straw is that obviously this, this, this is way, way thicker but it's much more brittle, so it bends, which is why you can use it as a cap. It doesn't kink as much, you can make it rounded, whereas this is kind of brittle and it just breaks. So that's why you use it as a, a ridge cap material. But this is what we've got. Four bundles, is it, Dad? It's four bundles, but they were triples because they all broke apart. We had, I can't tell you how many bundles we had, but I just couldn't bear, you know me, I couldn't bear wasting them. <laughs> so I split the bundles apart, made giant bundles of them, and tied them up in my rafters of my garage. So we thought we only had four left. <coughs> Excuse me, but now we look, 
they're double or triple size so we're hoping we could just about get away with it i think we can so as you can see here this is what we did with the you'll see it in there but there's essentially a let me make that brighter there's a triangle for the entrance that we made a little triangle entrance and a ridge and that's what's sitting up there now and this is as far as we've got we use no spars for this we just use cordage and these hazel leggers with no spars so we're doing it slightly differently than traditionally done well quite a bit differently but what we need to do now is layer up and then keep going up towards the ridge and that's when we can then make a straw hopefully enough a straw cap to go on top and we'll have to trim it because it looks like it needs a bit of a haircut at the moment and uh but it's looking good and the cabin's just sitting here in the sun looking quite nice dad's put some flowers outside from the looks of it we've got daffodils petunias dad looks like a petunia yeah they're f1s they're, yeah they're with the f1 through the winter they've not been great through the winter but now we've got them out in the sun a little bit of warm weather they've uh reheaded they've got the head on them and they've left coming out and the daffodils new bulbs this year it's looking good look Bed's at the, look at, yeah we'll, we'll have a look in a bit we showed them in the last video yeah. but that is that is the cabin and obviously you've got this nice sunny view yeah. so we've got the that. We, that. yeah we've got the cabin there and then this is where the roundhouse is so we've got some trimming to do in a minute we're just covering that layer right now wrap that round Yeah, you want a needle. Now, another piece, same, same fatness. You want a needle now? No, 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 we do another one more layer. Thinner layer, half that load, actually, and then we'll tie off.
We join us a few weeks later now from when we did the, the thatch. Quite a few weeks later. I'm in a t-shirt. It wasn't back then, I think. It was back end of winter. Uh, and we're at the stage now where we're going to play the walls, as they say. But wattle and daub. But what we're using is more of a cob mix this time than what I used previously in the Satsun house and the roundhouse. That clay, that mix basically, it consisted of mostly clay with straw and water, quite a bit of mud mixed in with that clay as well. Uh, and the result was where we'd done it in the open without the roof on first, like I said in that episode, it just dried and then it got wet from the rain and it dried and it got wet and it left really big cracks because of all that moisture inside just it evaporates and expands and contracts and it just causes huge cracks. Now you're always going to get cracks on structures like this but you can plaster over it with a real fine layer of just water and fine clay with a bit of sand but just each time it cracks and just keep filling in those cracks and eventually you get that solid wall layer. But what we're doing here is roughly four parts clay to sorry four parts sand to one part clay to one part straw roughly look it's a it's an estimation we're not we're not measuring it out properly we're just doing it here in this wheelbarrow but um yeah and what i'm finding is it's producing a much finer mix with that sand and that will hopefully help really bind it all together and create less cracks down the line that's the theory anyway so dad's gone to get more sand i'm going to crack on mixing the last of this bag of sand here uh in with this clay and some straw and we're going to do the outside and then we'll do the inside so stick around folks this is the sand so it's building sand so it's nice and coarse i wouldn't personally use that sort of beach sand or the sand that you can get for like kids play pits and things like that the really fine stuff that would be okay for plastering a layer over the cracks but it's not going to bind like this coarse building sand will so this stuff's really good this coarse stuff especially once it's mixed in with the clay and added with a bit of water but let me tell you folks it's horrible to dig clay once it's wet it's real good fun those who know will know where's the shovel let's, let's do this properly You slap it in, it just wedges in between the gaps of the hazel, the sticks, the woven sticks. And it just means that it can sit on itself and create that strong foundation. And really you want to build it up from the bottom and work up so that it has a solid foundation to dry on and it's all supported. And then you can smooth it off afterwards with the, I've got gloves on today, but with the palm of your hand Normally I don't use the gloves, but because I'm recording, I have to keep going back to the camera. It's easy just having gloves to then take them off and move the camera around. It's great to work with though, once it's done. Traditionally, thousands of years ago, they would have used animal dung and they still do to this day, horse manure, cow manure. And that gives it, a re that is the glue. That gives it a really good binding ability. And that is the very traditional kind of technique where they wouldn't have had the sand so much they would have used the dung for that but because we've got sand we don't need to
the clay is on well you can see it's gone on much smoother than clay I've done in the past with the addition of that sand uh, we've still got obviously the inside to do there's stuff to do there but we've got all the way around the outside we did quite a bit today all the way around here and we've just got a few panels to do up there and then the inside thatching is good I'm pleased with that we're gonna leave it staggered and not blend it in because it's something different I like the look of it um, and it's yeah normally I would blend it in with a drifter but I think that's quite nice as it is Dad's finishing one of the last mixes of today. It's the last mix of the day, it is yeah. indeed. And I'll be applying, applying to Amazon for some new elbows and wrists. <laughs> you don't stop. Do you want to show them your fire pit, Dad, that you've done? Because yeah, actually they've, they've that, seen yeah. that footage and they don't, we haven't explained what it is. Mike had some spares, good man, never throw anything away, of these slabs. So I thought, as you saw in that, I've, I've, I've got them concreted in there as best I can. Got my steel plate there. And the steel plate is bigger, it's out here somewhere. All the way round, you know, for heat dissipation. But listen, it's not like a forest, it's in my back garden. Um, as you can see, I have had the fire, no problem at all. We yet to have a cook up on it. I'll put this one down here for pots and pans. Originally, we bought this here, this space, for another build. It was, wasn't it? it gonna was, be a different it was shelter. Build. And I thought, well, you think if you're doing a mini village, you're gonna need a sort of communal area. So we're gonna build the other side of here, of the pallet uh, cabin and sit on the veranda, have a fire here, go in there, we've in the got an house. option, we can have fires Eve, for Eve's, both. Eve's totally spoiled, we're going to do a little party at some point, um, and then she, yeah, she can come round and we can roast marshmallows on the fire. Crack, and a, crack a beer, she'd like a beer. <laughs> crack a beer, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's great, so, and look at the backdrop, like we've got the hut nearly done, yeah. fire pit area. If you want to watch any of these builds that we're doing, this is called the Mini Village Series, and we're doing it for my daughter. Uh, so if you want to catch up, it's a great project for, well, for me to spend time with Dad, but also for you guys who want to get inspired and do things in your backyard, because that's what it's about. Backyard builds is yeah. what it's all about. Back garden us. building, and it's just all accessible. It's good fun, and hopefully you're enjoying the series. It's something a little bit different. We're certainly enjoying it, and we've got a few more ideas yeah. that we're going to do here to create the village. But um, after this, there'll probably be one more episode on this little roundhouse uh, and this area, and then we'll be cracking on with the next one. So... If you are not subscribed to Dad's channel, TA Fishing, what are you doing in life? Head on over there. Fishing. Head on over there, TA Fishing. Look it up on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description below. Hit the subscribe button. He's near 300,000 subscribers. It'd be awesome to see him get it, hopefully this year, but if not, really soon. And um, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next episode.